technological achievements at this year's Sundance range from animated films to rock docs. How did the filmmakers do it? We asked them. I suppose the biggest set we had was the New York skyline. And I wanted it to be even bigger, but our studio wasn't big enough. It took a team of about 25 people, eight weeks to build. Uh, you know, the, the Chrysler building's about this big. Uh, but yeah, so it's, and the camera sort of weaved amongst the buildings. So uh, we had over 2,000 assets. There was 200 characters, 200 sets, thousands of little props. Every single thing you see in the film was handcrafted. So even things like rain and, and smoke and fire were all real things. We had a team of, in the studio of about 50 people and then outside the studio probably another 50 sound designers, post people. So, you know, but still, it's not a big crew when you can compare it to, say, DreamWorks or Pixar, who have, I think, a staff of 700. So. On training day, I was, I was, my approach on training day was a little more, a little more kinetic, a little bit more in the shooting of it. And, and I, lit a little, I, lit, I lit it a little bit more in lighting. I used a little more lights in training day. In this case, because of New York, I don't know why, but I, I hear so much about video that I said I'm kind of going to shoot it as if I was shooting with video. Where I'm using minimum lights and more natural lights. And, um, and, and, and in New York, because it's, it's very difficult to shoot in New York because of the space and people don't care in New York if you're filming or not. They're going to walk across the street anyway. You got a, a window of time and the space are smaller, so I use smaller cameras. And I just, uh, I used very little light and I would, uh, the camera was very specific to when it was going to stalk, when it was going to just pan and not get in the way. I, I didn't want to be present at all as a director. I just wanted the story to be the story and keep myself as a director out of the equation, even more than training day. Documentaries I've seen about music usually suck to me because they're all about car wrecks and drug overdoses. So I thought if we, and no one's really made movies that are like deep and about the artists themselves, with few exceptions. You know, Scorsese's film about Bob Dylan is pretty great. Um, and I just wanted to go deep. So we decided to pick three guitarists that we loved who were also artists and could describe themselves. And we told their stories and then brought them together on a soundstage at Warner Brothers and had them interview each other and play guitar and teach each other electric guitar. I had this record at home of uh, a guitar that had a lot of sustain on it, and, I, and, I, and I, I got him to come around and have a listen to it. I said, can you get that? And he went away and came back with this phenomenal thing. Distortion pedal, which overloads the signal. Overdrive the sound and make it sound pretty rude. Just as a woman, I, I thought I had to be a certain way once I got on set. You know, I don't have a lot of female director role models, and so I, I was kind of thinking, all right, I'm going to have to get respect immediately. I'm, maybe I'm going to have to be a bitch. Maybe I'm going to have to act, you know, um, like a commander or, an, you know, just things that I actually am not good at. It's not who I am. And I think Judith, she told me um, that my sensitivity was my biggest asset as a director. And, you know, I don't, I've been hypersensitive my whole life and I never considered that as to be an asset. I mean I was always, it was something that I would hide from people. I would get emotional really easily and I always thought I had to be stronger. I would always tell myself I had to be stronger. And as a director I think I actually was able to channel that sensitivity um, and it, it worked for me. Yeah.